Addressing the 44th annual general meeting of the Reliance shareholders, Chairman Mukesh Ambani made a very interesting statement. He said he wanted to pursue the path where India would become 2G Mukt and 5G Yukt. Now, one could say it was taking a jibe perhaps at the Congress. The Congress Mukt Bharat has become a very popular slogan of a political discourse. But nevertheless, that one statement, that one intent of stating that 2G Mukt Bharat is what the chairman of Reliance Industries was aspiring for, says a lot. And that is what we're going to discuss today. The 2G Mukt Bharat and the potential of India's internet economy. Now, I'll be putting a link in the description on the very next day of the annual general meeting of Reliance. I put out an article where I elaborated upon the prospects of the uh, 2G Mukt Bharat and 5G Yuk Bharat. And I'll be elaborating them further here. The first thing you need to understand is that Reliance with 425 million subscribers, people may want to protest against it, people may want to criticize it, do whatever they want to. It's a market monopoly at this point. Market monopoly in the sense, along with Airtel, not so much as Vodafone and Idea, but along with Airtel, Reliance is the bigger player in the telecommunication market in India today. 425 million 4G users. That's not a small number. But if you go back to last two or three quarters, there's an interesting pattern that has been emerging. Reliance has been adding 20, 25, 30 million subscribers each quarter. Even in the last uh, one, they added significant number. But the problem is, at some point, the 4G users will start to plateau. The growth rate will start to plateau. What do you do then? And that is where the 2G Mukt Bharat comes into play. Now, Reliance made some very interesting announcements. There was one of the indigenous 5G services that will also employ the services of Google Cloud. So the Geo-Google collaboration is going very strong there. But the one announcement that is that has caught everyone by surprise, not by surprise, many were anticipating it, but has caught many by surprise, if I, would put the, if I were to put it that way, is the launch of Geophone. Now, Geophone is another Android device, as some might say, or just one another Android in the market. But no, look at the cost. Now, they would like, like to price it somewhere around $50, which is somewhere in the neighborhood of 4,500, 4,800 rupees. Because if they start going beyond 5,000 rupees, you already have some players in the market who can offer phones around the same price. You can start getting your basic Androids at rupees 6,000. But with the Geo phone, you get Reliance Geo SIM along with it. And along with it will come some certain special talk time packages and things like that. But this $50, anticipated to be $50, the company made no announcement of the cost or the pricing, but anticipated to be somewhere around $50, this Geophone made in collaboration with Google with an optimized Android operating system, this will be a game changer. This will be the path towards 2G Mukh Bharat. But how? Now just discuss 425 million 4G subscribers. They would obviously be looking to have this phone, but there is another segment of mobile phone users in India who are still on the featured phones. These are your lower income groups. These are your people in rural areas. And now as the income starts to increase, as the financing, uh, financing options start to emerge, these people would also be interested in capturing the 4G phenomena. They would be interested in using the Androids. And this is where the Geophone comes into play. If you take into account the total number of 2G subscribers right now in India, the 2G users, it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 300 million. So what is Reliance planning essentially? Reliance is saying, all right, let's get the 2G users to the 4G services through the Geophone route. And for the 4G users who can afford, let's get them to 5G through the indigenous 5G services we're already working on. So all in all put together, Reliance at some point, perhaps by the next two years would be looking at a, at a subscriber base of 600 million people just on 4G and 5G. Just on 4G and 5G. And this raises some very, very interesting prospects, all of them pertaining to the internet economy. Now, the first things first, what are the model that is Reliance going to be looking to follow? Now, Reliance last year in the peak of the pandemic launched Geomart. It's going to be very different than your big basket and your groffers. I elaborated that in the video also. I'll put the link in the description as well. It's a video which we did almost a year ago, but it's still very relevant today. So Geomart is what? It's aiming to combine your local Karyana store with the digital services. It's becoming a digital enabler of sorts for your local Karyana stores. 
with grofers or with big basket you place an order you get in 3 hours somewhere even 3 days in the city i am in but with geomart they planning to do it in 20 minutes 30 minutes so what is the important point here? it's not about the delivery time that can be optimized by the likes of big basket tomorrow or day after you know with a with a potential service partner that's not the point the point is the enabling of digital ecosystem for the small players the small players who might not be able to afford to go online because of the cost barriers because of the intellectual barriers because of the technological capacity barriers things like that reliance is trying to change that now how does it change really now i already elaborated in another article i've been covering this for a while that geo and facebook now even google are coming together for a super app now what is a super app before we go forward think of a super app as something that can do that can pin all your services into one single app So, for instance, right now you have Uber for uh, in, as a taxi app. Then you have Zomato's and your Swiggy's, and you have Brick Basket and the Grofers, and you have four other apps for something else. Imagine all of these services plugged into one app. Just Al and Paytm tried going that way, but not that successfully. Paytm can be considered as a teaser of a super app. Look at what all you can do on Paytm. You can go your mobile recharges, your Metro card recharges. You can you know use it to pay your credit card bills, things like that. But it's still a very small. These are what super apps really are. So, where do we look at the ideal example of super apps? We look at China's WeChat, and that is the first aspect I'm going to come to. Reliance and Facebook are coming up with a super app now in collaboration with Google. Tata, interestingly, has been on an acquisition spree. Another thing I wrote about very recently: Tata has been acquiring some online pharmacy. Then they have also acquired Big Basket, which is going to be a huge, huge move into the retail sector. Then they already have their own services like Tata Click. they have chroma and a plethora of other services amazon on the other hand is already sort of a super service with the number of uh, services you can access to one single platform say pharmacy your amazon fresh the other e-commerce portals and all and even the streaming service so all these three are now coming together to build a super app now 600 million users now you might say that these million users are on jio alone but look at the airtel users that are going to increase with time look at the vodafone idea users that are going to increase with time so four years later perhaps by the next national election we could have a situation where we could have a billion internet users it's a far fetched uh, it's a far fetched prediction maybe it's i'm being too optimistic perhaps but look at the prospects by one uh, we could have by 2024 1 billion internet users on 4G and 5G what does it even mean now i'll take the example of wechat again it's a very uh, it's a very speculative chart that we might come across but it's also important to understand that internet has boomed in india and i all keep telling everyone this that if you want to understand the internet boom in india look at how youtube progressed in india look at where it was in 2008 and look where it is in 2018 Look at how Facebook boomed in India. Look at how WhatsApp boomed in India. Instagram, TikTok. So we have a lot of case studies, but we need to look back and understand that there's potential for a lot of content. Nevertheless, coming back to what does it mean for the internet economy? Now, the first model is the WeChat model. Now, three players, three super apps. But these super apps are not about what these Reliance and the Tatas and the Amazon may want to offer. If you go to China, there's this app WeChat. Now WeChat might have its own services they'll have an e-commerce platform they'll have a chatting platform you can upload images you can do tons of things but there's a thing called mini apps and that is what got me interested in the super chat in the super app model now what are mini apps essentially mini apps can be defined as services which are hosted within these apps so for instance if i run a business it might be a local bakery i might be working out from home as the trend is now with the pandemic I might be working out from home, but I cannot afford an app of my own because I know there will be no downloads. I'll have to put in a marketing cost, and there will be another building cost, maintenance cost. I need to hire a developer, things like that. Very confusing. So what do I do? I sign up on one of these three apps in the future, as a lot of people in China have already done. You host your service there. It's a mini app, so your service is within the app interface. People can access it through the menu. and my service will be one of the countless services people have hosted there people can host their tutorial services they can put forward their education charities financial services bakery restaurants what not so these mini apps are very very important going forward for the internet economy and that is why it brings me to the first part digital enabler 
the 4Gs, the 5Gs and these super apps are going to be digital enablers for all the smaller players, for all the MSMEs. Now, if I'm a local baker, I'll continue with that example. I don't need to sell in all parts of India. I do not. It's not feasible. Maybe I do not have the scale. So what can I do? I can simply just restrict it to my geography. The super app will give me that option. I can simply restrict it to a certain area, to a certain time, to a certain day. And it's very convenient for me. I don't have to spend anything on the development or the maintenance of my separate app, which people may or may not download. But I am sure that there are a lot of people downloading these three apps. So I can choose either one of them or two of them. And of course, there will be some revenue sharing model, which is something that is, you know, that can be figured out later. Now, has this model really worked? I'll give an example again. WeChat has 1.2 billion users across the world, majority of them in China, perhaps more than a billion of them in China. The number of apps by 2020, the number of mini apps like the one I just described, the one me where I'm a baker and not someone talking to you. So those kind of mini apps, they are in the tune of 3.2 million on WeChat, just on WeChat, 3.2 million mini apps. Before you start to ask, how can one just access through 3.2 million apps? Not all the 3.2 million apps will be visible to every user. Because as I said, some might be restricted to geography, then they, some might be restricted to uh, certain times of the day, certain days of the week, certain weeks of the year, things like that. So they will be restricted. Some services might just be there for a certain period of the year, say the summer holidays, say like a tutorial services. So these things have become great enablers of the internet economy in China. And it has boomed. Even if you go through the article that I'll be putting in the description, the link of it, people are spending more time on these apps before to, be, between 2018 and 2019 alone for WeChat. The number of users spending time on these mini apps actually doubled. So of course, there's a lot of appetite for these mini apps along with the main services that the apps are offering. So this is the first potential area where 4G and 5G will work. And if there are still certain doubts that remain, look at what 4G has done for our cab services, the transportation services, food services, and a plethora of other services. How much we access our services online? When was the last time you called up a restaurant separately and ordered food? When was the last time you called up a cab driver separately and ordered a ride? You did not. This is how 4G economy has changed. Look at the employment it has generated. How often you've passed in Bangalore or Pune and Noida, where a number of bikes are parked together with Zomato, Swiggy players already on it. I mean, these are just examples. There will be more companies tomorrow. It's not like these companies will have a monopoly. There'll be tons and tons of companies tomorrow, big, small, medium, but all of them would have the access to digital services. That's the first success point of this. The second success point is, of course, what do Tata's and the Amazons do? Now, Geophone is here. Geo is making a phone with Google, but making a smartphone is something that Tata has also often commented about. If you go to Chroma, you can find Tata has already started building a lot of electronic products. They have their own refrigerators. They have their own televisions. Amazon has built a lot of electronics. They have Alexa, they have Kindles, and they have also a range of electronic devices. So what if tomorrow, two of these companies combined with someone like a Micromax or a Carbon, any player, local or international, Apple is already giving a lot of finance options with the iPhones, for instance. What if they say, all right, let's have a bundled sort of a subscription with one of the mobile phone players. Let's put our services there. Let's pitch our super app there. More competition. And more competition means more prospects for India's internet economy to boom. At this point, India's eco digital economy to the GDP as a ratio is somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 to 18%. Some reports put that 20%. But if you look at China, it's already more than 40%. So look at the contrast there. And we have barely scratched the surface. There's so much to do already when it comes to India's digital economy. So these three players, which are going to be in competition in the future, followed by who knows Flipkart and some other player down the lane, these will be fueling the growth of internet economy in India. And the last point, other services, how do they find themselves in the competition of Reliance and Vodafone Idea and Airtel? Where is a place for other telecommunication services. What kind of telecommunication services we could see with 4G and 5G? Now, we've already spoken about broadband. Reliance Fiber is doing well. So this is also another kind of internet service that is going to boom India's internet economy. But all these factors put together are only going to make sense when 2G Mukbharat becomes a reality. Because if 2G 
users are not moved to 4G. They're still strangled in that old setup where they're using those slow internet connections. They cannot access a lot of apps. You get more and more people online. There's an incentive for entrepreneurs to be online. The more entrepreneurs online, the more competition online. And suddenly you have a lot of data points being exchanged. Now the, crypt, uh, the, the critics and the skeptics may say that, oh look, the data protection and the data privacy is not in order. The data localization is not in order. All very fair very fair problems, very fair points. But at some point, Indian government is going to address all of them. But for now, look at the intent from India's biggest industrialist. 2G Mukt, 5G Mukt. This is what we should be aiming for. And given our transition from 2G to 3G to 4G was very staggered, very slow. And we had to wait for the arrival of Geo for the 4G to really pick up in the Indian market. Let's hope that the transition from 4G to 5G is not that slow. And this transition from 2G to 4G is as fast as one can hope for. Because if this works out, and it will work out, it's not a matter of if, I must correct myself, it's a matter of when. And when this works out, the internet economy in India is going to boom. It's going to be a, a success story which will be written in every corner of India, the big cities, the small cities, everywhere. And this is what we are looking forward to. Thank you.